What's up dudes and dudes to the year and up, my name is Seth, and today we're going to be taking a look at gem stat re-rolling in Trove. I'm going to have a separate video that's going to talk about the augmenting so that we can kind of have everything focused in this one video. Now, while I already did have another video that talked about uh, gem stat re-rolling and augmenting in more detail, now I actually have a better understanding of the system, so now I can kind of just explain things a lot more specific. So hopefully you find this video helpful. Uh, if you come over to the gem forge table, which of course is crafted uh, not on the novice bench it's in the adventurers over in gear improvement and gems uh, you can craft the gem forge table right here it's not that expensive you actually get the tentacles of Cthulhu from the random invaders that end up popping down every 12 minutes while you're inside a normal world and then just 100 gem dust and 30 infinium but if you come over to this table you're gonna be a little bit confused uh, right click any of your gems right so if we look at this right here we've got magic find crit damage and max health now uh, I'm I hope that I can explain this in a way that makes sense. Uh, gems in general are going to end up uh, randomly having, out of the three different slots, what I like to call bronze, silver, and gold stats. All right, so work with me here. Let's take a look at the crit damage, for example, is maxed out at 143.7%. Now, that is not the gold stat, because the golden stat of crit damage is somewhere around 197 or something like that, right? So that tells me immediately that this is the silver stat, all right? And then up here, the magic damage is only at 6,223, which tells me that this is the bronze stat. This, this will all make sense in a moment, and it is very relevant to gem stat rerolling, because this is pretty much the end, end game of Trove right here that I'm trying to explain. So this is a bronze stat. And then this right here with the maximum health being at 492%, which is crazy. That's a lot of health, isn't it? That is going to end up being the golden stat. So what you essentially are going to end up doing with the end game of Trove is trying to mix up and kind of change the slots of each of those stats. So I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. First of all, we come over to the Adventurer's Crafting Table, go into Gems, and then down at the bottom, there's going to be the Contained Chaos Spark. This is going to be what's required in order to re-roll your gems. I know it's crazy that it costs three Lunar Souls each, meaning that you're only going to be able to re-roll your gems about, what is it, like three times a week or something like that based on the Lunar Souls that we get? Uh, Binding Darkness is going to be an item that is found in gem booster boxes, which it's not. It's very, very rare. Uh, you know, I had a gem booster box video come out that ended up showing off the fact that we just couldn't end up getting them, or, may, or maybe that video hasn't come out yet. I'm not exactly sure, but spoiler alert, gem booster boxes are not good at all to try and get the Binding Darkness, okay? Uh, but they are going to be very rarely found from world bosses, which are the elite mobs that you see out in the world. They're kind of like the bigger version of enemies. And most of all, I would recommend that if you're trying to farm this, farm Shadow Towers. Normal Shadow Towers... I don't even know if normal Shadow Towers can even drop the Binding Darkness, and if they can, the drop rate is just such a ludicrously insane drop rate, it's not worth it. I've, as of right now anyways, I'm gonna have another video separate from this that's gonna talk about it in more detail, but I've been farming normal Dreadnought with my Shadow Keys over 150 times now, and I still haven't gotten another Binding Darkness from any of the big, fat, elite enemies that are just hanging out in the Shadow Tower. However, if you go to hard mode, you're going to end up getting them rarely, but they're definitely more common. So what you essentially are going to try and do is find out which Shadow Tower's first arena generated with the most bosses. So you're going to go in there, kill all the bosses, come back out, destroy your Shadow Tower portal, replace it down on the ground, and then load it up again and just rinse and repeat over and over. And that's going to be a very efficient way of grinding this resource specifically. If you want to grind the Shadow Tower bosses casually while you're doing it, okay, fine. And then the Eyes of Cthulhu are going to also be an item that not only drops from tomes and stuff, but it's going to be from invaders as well. So when you end up actually having enough uh, items that you can craft one of these bad boys, again, I'm missing the Binding Darkness, I got plenty of the Lunar Souls and stuff, is on this gem in specifically, because this is the bronze stat and this is the gold stat, and of course you don't want max health on any of your gems, I'll talk about this at why in a minute, uh, what I would essentially want to do is re-roll the magic damage so that that is ideally crit hit. 
I want crit hit to be the bronze stat on this gem. And then, because crit hit would then be taking up that slot, then I would randomize max health over and over until it generated with magic damage. And then the whole point is that this 6,000 magic damage would suddenly take up the golden slot, and then it would jump up to around like 11 to 13,000 magic damage. Whereas the crit hit would be somewhere around like 7% or something like that. Uh, generally, if you're trying to watch out for like the bronze, silver, and gold stat, uh, you you can usually get a pretty good idea just by looking at the stats uh, that ended up generating on the gems. So you can see right here, 13,000 magic damage. That obviously is the gold stat. 77% for the crit damage. I guess I would say that that's the bronze, but honestly, this might be the bronze. The gem in general didn't seem to generate each of these stats very well, honestly, but it is a lesser gem. See, this is more what I'm talking about, where we've got the magic damage up here at 8,000, but again, this could kind of probably end up being the bronze slot, and then there's the max health up here. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to determine the different numbers that end up showing, like, what specifically is the lowest stat value on the gem and stuff like that, right? So ideally, again, I'm going to end up having to also swap this max health off, except for the fact that my stats, I'm at 89.8% crit hit. And thus, if I end up getting the crit hit on here, that'll be another 7%. So that'll knock me up, uh, to about like 96, 97%. And then do I really need to get this max health off there? I don't know. That's where you got to kind of determine that for yourself. Now, uh, another thing too that I do want to stress out, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail in the gem augmenting video, is power rank is pretty much going to be what the end game of Trove is now. You're going to be looking at the total PR that you get on a gem because the stats themselves aren't really going to matter as much as much. For a free-to-play player and just the fact that the uh, randomization resource is like so difficult to get, even for myself, like you can't pay to win your way to getting the reroll uh, item. Unfortunately, unless the devs end up actually upping the amount of binding darkness that we get out of gem boxes, it's just not going to happen. It's not worth it. So what you're going to be looking for is on an empowered gem, you're going to be looking for 800 PR and up. Uh, you know, normally 800 was the maximum. I've actually seen gems at uh, 819 now, so the PR is completely random. They made it even worse, unfortunately. I, I will admit uh, that they made the power rank variation even worse in the Eclipse update because now it's a lot more random. And generally speaking, or generally speaking, out of the random gems that I found, I'm starting to notice that less PR seems to be a lot more common than the high PR value. Now, the reason why you're going to be looking for that 800 plus PR on an empowered gem or 700 plus PR on a base gem, and of course you're going to want three stats on a lesser gem, a two star, three stats on an empowered gem, three star. The reason why you want the most power rank that you can get is because that means that that gem in particular is going to end up, once it's fully maxed out and fully augmented, is going to have the most stat value possible. Because that's pretty much what you're farming for. Now that said, you know, you kind of got to just take what you can. Unfortunately, that's kind of one of the biggest issues with the gem stats right now uh, is just that you can't really farm for anything specific because of the fact that they're all random. I would also love to see if there was ever a time where we could change the element of a gem uh, so that we could stop having so many of them conflict or... Better than that is I would very much like if we could actually get uh, the ability on the Empower Gem swapped over because for a ranged character, for example, you're going for Explosive Epilogue. You want Pyro Disc on almost every character if you're going to be farming because of the extra movement speed buff. Uh, and, and again, you know, you got to try and keep all that in mind. For example, right here, you can see this uh, 2250, 2251 on my class gem. Now, as far as I remember, uh, this class gem was not actually ideal power rank. I did not get a perfect uh, gunslinger, uh, you know, class gem. So this is probably what's actually keeping my PR from being as high as some of the other people that are up there at the top, right? Because otherwise you see most of my lesser gems are 1754, 1755. And uh, I know that these were actually varying in the power rank, but then once I ended up augmenting them, they all ended up kind of evening out. Whereas this one 
You know, I'm pretty sure a class gym is supposed to be a little bit stronger. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe augmenting just kind of forces the power rank up. But I, And again, we'll talk about all that when I do the uh, augmenting video. Most of all, I just wanted to clue you all in on what you're actually farming for in terms of gems right now because of the fact that you can randomize the stats. So no longer do you technically have to farm for a perfect stat gem, which is either physical or magic damage, crit hit, and... Uh, critical damage because the ideal gems are going to generate with the three stats that you want yes but are they going to end up generating with the gold silver and bronze stat value slots that you actually want perfectly or are you going to get a gem that's perfect stats and generates with 15% crit hit because that ended up getting the gold slot and then you got to try and randomize that and just it, It's a headache, man. I know that it's a lot to take in right now uh, Unfortunately, I wish that the gem system was a little bit more user-friendly because as of right now, man It is way too overcomplicated. I feel uh, Especially with the fact that each of these slots doesn't have like an indicator of gold silver and bronze uh, you know and the fact that like right here, for example, this is the silver stat. The silver stat is not always in the center. It could be at the top, it could be at the bottom. It's all random and all over the place. I would like to see it if they would end up uh, fixing the gems a little bit more so that the top stat was always the most powerful, uh, the second stat was the second most powerful, and the bottom one was always the weakest, right? I think that that would make it a little bit easier for people to kind of understand rather than a cryptic system like this where we have to create our own imaginary gold, silver, bronze slots just so that we can tell which of these is going to be the ideal slot spot, right? Now, that said, again, that's like the Trove end game. That's pretty much what myself and a lot of the era people that are at the true end game and have like almost everything in the game, that's what we're farming for. So for the average player, you're not really gonna have to worry about that. And honestly speaking, as an average player, I, you know, the gem re-rolling is all right, but I would honestly say to stay away from it if you can, because you're going to have better odds finding a perfect stat gem than you are rolling the stat that you want, unless you get really, really lucky, because that's the whole thing, is you can potentially on a gem, like uh, this this particular gem, I've actually re-rolled this stat to try and get crit hit a couple times now. I re-rolled it once, it got max health, then I re-rolled it again, and it ended up getting the magic damage. So that's already, uh, you know, two re-rollers right there, and then I just didn't have any more Binding Darkness. But anyways, I don't want to get into that. Thank you so much for watching. Very much appreciate it. Hope you found this video helpful. I really, really do. Uh, leave any questions that you have in the comment section down below, and thank you so much for watching, everybody. Very much appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content, as well as building up loyalty points from my merch store. Links are in the description for that. Sign on and stay epic, everybody.